history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. We are tracking big developments this morning on the coronavirus here in the Houston area. Fort Bend County reporting what's being called its first presumptive positive case. We're talking about what that means, what the school district is saying, and how you can stay safe. Breaking right now, death at an industrial plant in Rosenberg. Investigators are saying a man died after getting trapped in some concrete. We'll take a closer look at the scene here coming up. And we're starting off our Thursday with some cool weather. Temperatures right now are in the 50s. Meteorologist Britta Merwin will tell us if this chilly weather will hang around or when we might be able to ditch our jackets today. Mm -hmm. Thursday, the 5th of March at 4.30. Good morning to you. I'm Owen Conflenti. And I'm Amy Davis. We've got Sophie here tracking Hi. our traffic. Good, good morning. morning. Yes. Good morning. So far, so good. Just uh, one incident popping up on the east side, but that since has cleared. So we're looking good so far this morning. Starting Early. Starting off well, yeah. yeah. I always say right. plenty of time for something to go wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Britta, good morning. It is good chilly. morning. It, it definitely is a cooler start, but it feels nice and crisp. Humidity is down. It's going to be a beautiful Thursday. We don't have to worry about fog for your morning drive or wet roads. It's going to be beautiful with sunshine on the way. So let's take you outside. Uh, we're waking up to a little more cloud cover. Temperatures generally in the 50s. We're at 56 degrees currently at Bush Airport. Uh, temperatures in the north of town also in the 50s. So this is a cooler start than yesterday. Light sweaters, especially for the kids, a great idea. Our winds are now coming in from the north. That is why it is a cooler start and it's also bringing in that nice dry air. So humidity will be low for the remainder of the day. It is going to be breezy though. Winds right now about 15 miles per hour here in town, 24 at the coast. Our pollen count continues to be really high so that's the only issue with it being breezy is of course it's going to pick up all that tree pollen. But try and get outside and enjoy it if you can because look at that. I mean we're waking up to a little bit of cloud cover but the sunshine is going to take over. We'll be in the 60s for lunchtime temperatures in Sofia. We're topping off at 70 degrees this afternoon. It's going to be lovely. We'll talk about the weekend soon. Cannot wait. That sounds great. All right. Thank you, Britta. Time for your time saver traffic now. Map is looking green. Nice and early this morning. Let's take a look at our first camera. This is the East Beltway 8 at Green Shadow North. Right here is where we had a heavy truck stall. This was about 10 minutes ago blocking one lane, but you could see nice and clear this morning. One more shot. This is the northwest side of town, the Northwest Freeway. Uh, we did have that shot. It's not happening right now, but let's check out your time saver traffic times. Looking good coming in from Pearland. Just 11 minutes, guys. Back to you.
Okay, uh, Sophia, thank you. 4.32 right now. I go to this breaking news. We're getting in from Rosenberg this morning. A man is dead uh, after being trapped in some concrete in a hopper car. Uh, here's a live look at the scene. This is uh, near Highway 59 and Daly Road. Uh, crews had a tough time reaching the man, uh, and he died there. It's unclear if the man is a worker or maybe a, a robbery suspect. Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office is handling this investigation, and our Vincent Crivelli will be covering it live from the scene in the next hour. Also breaking, a murder investigation is underway right now in North Houston. We're told police found a car on fire with the person inside. This is all happening on Werner Street and Waffle Drive. As we get more information, we will bring you updates on air and online at click2houston.com. All right, let's go to the latest on the coronavirus crisis. The latest developments in the outbreak have a lot of folks in Fort Bend County concerned. Yeah, that's right. The county says it is handling its first presumptive positive case involving a 70-year-old man. Channel 2's Brittany Jeff Jeffers joins us live with more details on that man and the county's next steps. So Brittany, can you tell us what presumptive positive means? Yeah, we heard from a lot of different health officials yesterday, and essentially they tell us that this man is going to have to undergo more health testing. Uh, but they do say at this point they do believe that this is the real deal. Now they do say, as you mentioned, that this is the first presumptive positive case of COVID-19 in Fort Bend County. And health, health officials say that this patient is a man in his 70s. They say that he tested positive after he traveled abroad and became ill upon returning to the United States. So citing HIPAA laws, however, yesterday, health officials were extremely tight-lipped about what country the man had traveled to, what airport he'd returned to, or when those tests were conducted. They did confirm that his symptoms were discovered by his personal physician and that he had no pre-existing conditions. Right now, that patient, we are told, is hospitalized and he is stable. At this point, health officials believe that this situation appears to be isolated. As this case was associated with travel, at this time, we still have no evidence of community spread of COVID-19. So looking ahead here, we are told that confirmation of the patient's results or will be coming back from the CDC in the next day or two. But in the meantime, that health officials were really reiterating the importance of everyone staying calm. They say at this point, if, if you are showing symptoms to not go to the ER to see your uh, family physician, they also say the very best thing that you can do is practice that good hygiene to make sure that you are washing your hands, uh, covering your mouth when you cough, all of those things they say will be very helpful as far as preventative measures are concerned. We're live here this morning in Fort Bend County. I'm Brittany Jeffers, KPRC Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Brittany. Fort Bend ISD, of course, is aware of that first presumptive case of coronavirus in the county. They say they will hold classes as usual. They're monitoring the situation and they'll take guidance from the CDC. Now, spring break for Fort Bend ISD is next week. The district says it has more families than other districts that travel internationally at this time, and they are prepared to assist families who have concerns about managing the health of their household. If we have a family or staff member who travels internationally and chooses to self-quarantine upon their return, we are going to make every effort to support their decision. The district says it will also support families who want to keep their kids home if they have asthma or if they're otherwise medically fragile in order to avoid potential exposure to someone who may have traveled during the break. It also plans to have campuses disinfected daily. The U.S. death toll has climbed to 11. One victim is in California, the rest are in Washington State. Federal authorities announced an investigation into the Seattle area nursing home, which is at the center of the outbreak there. Vice President Pence will travel uh, the, the, today to talk about the situation uh, at that nursing home. In Washington, lawmakers in the House have struck a deal to dedicate billions of dollars to address the coronavirus outbreak. That measure will move to the Senate next, which uh, could pass as early as today. At click2houston.com, we're working to answer the most frequently asked questions that a lot of you have about the novel coronavirus, including what you should do if you think you have the symptoms uh, and uh, who may have been exposed to that patient in Fort Bend County. It's all on the homepage of click2houston.com.
And now to a developing story. Harris County deputies are investigating the death of a five-year-old girl who stopped breathing at preschool. The call came in Wednesday afternoon from Kleinbrook Community Preschool in the northwest part of town. The girl was flown by Life Flight to Memorial Hermann Hospital but did not survive. Investigators say there are no obvious signs of trauma and they're hoping an autopsy will clarify how the girl died. So far, no charges have been filed. And now to decision 2020. The field of Democratic presidential candidates is changing day by day. Elizabeth Warren confirmed she was reassessing her future in the race, and Mike Bloomberg suspended his campaign. Here's a look at the delegate count. According to NBC, Joe Biden is in first place, and Senator Bernie Sanders is in second. This morning, California is still counting votes, so these numbers could change later today. Meantime, Bloomberg is throwing his support behind Biden. Bloomberg cannot legally donate more than $2,800 to Biden, but he can start a super PAC. President Trump called Bloomberg spiteful and says he's not worried about Biden's boost in support. He's going to, you know, try and save face by putting some money into Biden's campaign. And we'll see what happens. I don't think that's going to have an impact. Now he's doing that because, you know, he's spiteful and he's a spiteful guy. I know him well. Well, this morning, Vice President Joe Biden will talk exclusively with the Today Show's Savannah Guthrie about the state of the race. The Today Show, of course, starts right here at 7 a.m. NASA's Curiosity rover that's on Mars was pretty busy over the holidays. Coming up, we're going to take a look at its most detailed view of the red planet. And this happened on the streets of Hollywood, but it's not part of any movie. Up next, the details behind this aggressive road rage crash. The time now is 4.39. On Channel 2. Good morning, your time is 4.41. We are waking up to a little bit of cloudy skies, but sunshine is on the way. So grab your sunglasses, you'll need them later this morning. Uh, temperatures are currently in the 50s. It's a little cool out there, so grab a light jacket, but we're in for a nice warm up. Coming up in a few moments, Owen, I'll let you know what we're expecting for your afternoon forecast. And more importantly, let's talk about the weekend. Over to you. I like that. All right, Britta, thanks. The internet's buzzing over this video showing a road rage crash, call it a crash, but out of control situation in Los Angeles. Yeah, police say the driver who went after another driver with his vehicle is now facing charges. <laughs> Yeah, you can see that That's white nuts, BMW. Amy. I know the white BMW crashes into another truck, and as the truck's driver tries to get away, it is slammed once again. Police say the driver of the BMW is 27-year-old David Zulalian. He is facing possible assault with a deadly weapon charges. Police didn't say what prompted such a dangerous reaction. But pretty scary. Wow. All right. A Virginia teenager's trip to the amusement park was supposed to be a day of fun. But it took a terrible turn. Coming up, how the 16-year-old ended up stuck in a go-kart surrounded by paramedics. And good morning, guys. Let's take a look at your roads. We've got a heavy truck stall here at the North Freeway at Cross Timbers. I'll let you know what roads are affected and how your morning commute is looking coming up. I don't, I don't think we would have... Not all of us would have survived if we had been upstairs still. Uh, families in Tennessee still reeling after the deadliest day of tornadoes in seven years. Up next, how strangers are helping in the hardest hit areas. It's 443. Welcome back. It's 445, taking a look outside at the Southwest Freeway. 56 degrees outside. Britta Merwin will have our full forecast in just a few moments. Well, here's a look at our top stories around the nation today. Three people are still missing in Putnam County, Tennessee, after that deadly tornado hit the area early Tuesday. So the National Weather Service says the twister was a powerful EF4, uh, and that has winds up to 175 miles an hour. Entire neighborhoods are ruined. Hundreds of families are trying to figure out what do they, what do, they do next. In the meantime, many are relying on the kindness of strangers during this dark time. Alex Vaughn says her home and business were destroyed and volunteers came to help her clean up. There have been, there's just, there have been a lot of people helping out them, a lot of strangers, people I've never met before. National Weather Service says the second tornado in the East Nashville area was an EF3. Death toll remains at 24. The second search of damaged areas is expected to be completed by noon today. 
A terrifying ordeal for a 16-year-old in Virginia. Listen to this. She got her hair stuck in the engine of a go-kart at an amusement park. Madia Ruffin's braid got entangled in the go-kart's engine, trapping her for what she says felt like an hour. I was thinking I was going to die. I thought that was my last time. She had uh, like a blood clot where her scalp actually lifted from her skull. Well, her mom says Funland employees tried two knives and wire cutters to saw off her daughter's hair, but those didn't work. Paramedics were called in. They had to take apart the go-kart and use a harness to lift the girl out. Ruffin says her once over the shoulder length hair is gone after it was ripped and cut. So this is the largest and highest resolution wow. panoramic NASA uh, panoramic picture that NASA's Curiosity rover has ever taken while on Mars. It's made up of almost 1,200 individual photos that they've stitched together. They were taken over four days over Thanksgiving. The rover is uh, inside of a large crater exploring a region that was the site of lakes and streams billions of years ago. It looks like the Sand Dunes National Park. I know, a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. The Rockets take on the Clippers tonight at 7 at the Toyota Center. Uh, plus, the Astros' Zach Greinke looks like he's ready for the regular season. Here's sports director Randy McElvoy this morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Xfinity Sports Desk. Here's what's happening. We'll start with the Rockets. They face a final 22-game stretch to try to improve their seeding in the West. Back to practice yesterday after that embarrassing meltdown in New York against the Knicks on Monday night. They've got to find a way to bounce back quickly tonight. They better bring it because the red-hot and fully healthy L.A. Clippers are in town tonight. Clippers are the two-seed in the West. Everybody thinks they're a big-time threat to the Lakers. So no lack of respect for Rockets head coach Mike D'Antoni. They're, they're one of the best teams out there, if not the best, and uh, we know that. And so it's always going to be a good game. It just has a little bit more implication now than in November or whatever, just getting closer to playoff time. All right, 7 o'clock tip tonight. Rice men at Southern Miss in Hattiesburg last night. Hot start from distance. No shocker with this club. Drew Peterson feeling it. Puts the Owls up by 8. Then Trey Murphy the third. He's always feeling the touch there. Three more. Owls start to pull away. Then Robert Martin, the slam for the team high, 18 points. Rice wins 72-57. All right, uh, three weeks from tonight. Are you ready? Astros play for keeps on opening night against the Angels at Minute Maid Park. They're still getting ready out in Florida. Taking on the Marlins yesterday at West Palm. The story in this one, Zach Greinke lights out again in his second spring start. Went three scoreless innings, gave up only two hits, struck out two, zero ERA so far, and it's two starts for Zach. We'll take that. Michael Brantley had an RBI double in the Astros' two-to-one loss. All right, reports out the longest tenured Houston Texan at 10 years. Long snapper John Weeks is on his way to a new deal with the Texans. Well-deserved for Weeks. He's been locked down at that position, never missed a game, has the franchise record of consecutive of games played at 160. The new league year starts uh, in the middle of March. All right, reminder, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at KPRC2 Randy McAvoy. Have a great day. We'll see you tonight. All right, we are counting down until single game Houston Astros tickets go on sale. It happens today at 9 o'clock this morning, less than five hours to go. Opening day is set for Thursday, March 26th. The team will face the Los Angeles Angels. All right, it's 4.50 right now. We're getting you moving and yeah. grooving. Sophia's getting on you traffic. The door. Yeah. Hey, good morning. It's nice and clear. We had a few incidents just a few minutes ago, but everything's moving and grooving for your Thursday morning. Awesome. Nice. Right. <laughs> not a bad way to start the day. A fog is not an issue. You don't have to worry about rain. And in fact, we get sunshine today. It's going to be okay. beautiful. Get outside and enjoy it. This morning, you are going to know some clouds mm -hmm. to start your day, some cooler temperatures. It's a good idea to grab a light sweater. Uh, it's really this afternoon that you're going to notice that beautiful weather just taking over. That is a live look over downtown thanks to our Kaplan Sinus Relief camera. Uh, you can actually see the clouds overhead. Again, during the morning commute, they'll be hanging around, but we'll scour out the clouds as we go throughout the day. Uh, right now at Bush Airport, we're at 56 degrees, mid 50s in Katy, 58 degrees in Galveston. So a nice, cool start. It's thanks to that north breeze, and our winds right now are coming in around 15 miles per hour. So it will be a breezy day. In fact, Galveston has winds at 24 miles per hour. 
hour and they will stay gusty as we go into the afternoon. The bonus is that beautiful sunshine, low humidity, temperatures in the 60s for your lunchtime will top off around 70 to 72 degrees this afternoon. Now tree pollen remains very high. So with the winds being elevated, keep that in mind. It's going to blow the pollen around. So if you are an allergy sufferer, today is a day to be on top of those symptoms. Take a look at radar and satellite. That area of low pressure from yesterday moving on out behind it. Nice clear skies. It's going to be beautiful. We do have a little bit of a weak cold front that's going to sneak in here for the end of the work week. It's not going to bring us rain, but it will create a slightly cooler Saturday. So you'll notice that we're expecting 60s on Saturday with partly cloudy skies and a little bit of a warm up on Sunday as those winds turn back on shore and come in right off the Gulf from the south. Meanwhile, as we look towards next week, we have an area of low pressure moving in from the west. It's going to take its time kind of hanging out to the north of us. So we're not going to see a ton of rain, but you're going to notice some light rain chances, warm and muggy weather weather and a lot more cloud cover. So we're seeing 80s popping up towards the end of our 10 day forecast. For today, we're in the low 70s. Winds will relax later tonight. So tomorrow is going to be a chilly start in the 40s. Beautiful weekend weather. Do not forget to spring forward. So going to bed Saturday night, bump those clocks an hour forward. And then on Sunday, the sunset will be around 725 instead of 625. Next week, a little more of a warm up, muggy conditions, a few isolated showers. Uh, so nothing major heading our way, Sophia, which is always good news to pass along. Over to you. I love it. 70s across the board. My kind of weather. All right. Thank you, Britta. Let's take a look at your time saver traffic. Green across the map. This is the North Freeway at Cross Timbers. You can see that it's a heavy truck stall in the right-hand lane starting to move along, not affecting traffic. So that is the good news. One more shot here. This is the Northwest Freeway at Jones. See that car stalled as well? Should be moving in just a few minutes. And not affecting traffic there either. Let's take a look at your time saver traffic times. All green across the map, 24 minutes in from the Woodlands, just 10 minutes in from Pearland, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Sophia. It is 4.53 this morning. Here's a look at what's trending today. Alex Trebek giving us an update on his health. A year ago, the Jeopardy host was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. He says the one year survival rate is only 18% and his journey has not been an easy one with chemo and bouts of depression. But Trebek made it clear he's not given up. If I, no. If we, because so many of us are involved in this same situation, if we take it just one day at a time with a positive attitude, anything is possible. Well, Trebek says he's looking forward to celebrating his second anniversary of survival. And I swim like a fish in the sea all the time. But if that's what it takes to be free, I don't mind. Still, still moving to me. Ah, Willie Nelson with a little still, still moving to me last night on the rodeo stage performing for thousands of fans at NRG Stadium. His ninth solo rodeo appearance. A shout out to everybody from the wine garden yesterday. We had a, we had a blast and there's lots of great selections. Uh, tonight is Latin American music winner Becky G performing her rodeo debut tonight on the stage. Rodeo Houston is always working to be more inclusive and they're making a big change today. Yeah, coming up at five, how it's holding its first ever sensory friendly carnival experience starting this morning. Also, we got big news from Katy Perry, the pop star. We're going to look at her new music video and an announcement she made overnight. 4.54 here at Channel 2. Time now is 4.57. Katy Perry is pregnant. The singer revealed her baby bump at the end of her Never Worn White music video, which dropped last night. The 35-year-old told fans on Instagram that both her album and her baby are due this summer. <laughs> Perry has been dating actor Orlando Bloom since 2016, and this is her first child. Congratulations. Very nice. Yeah, she's a little baby bump she revealed there at the end. That's beautiful. <laughs> Back with more Channel 2 News today after this by power people live from kprc this is channel 2 news today this morning the coronavirus crisis is hitting close to home what we're learning about a presumptive positive case in fort bend county and how fort bend leadership is handling that news and breaking this morning, a man has died after Fort Bend County deputies say they found him trapped in concrete. Our Vincent Crivelli will have a live report from the scene. 
You might want to bring a jacket with you as you head out uh, this morning. It is a little chilly, but a British track and a warm up. We got some sunshine ahead. And, uh, in the script here, it says weekend weather. So uh, it's Thursday. We're going to look to the weekend. How about it? Yeah, it's never too early. All right. <laughs> Five o'clock now. Good morning to you. I'm Owen Conflenti. And I'm Amy Davis. In for Tanaya this morning, we've got Sophia here tracking our traffic. You're yeah. still smiling, so that's I'm good. smiling. <laughs> so that is good news. When I'm smiling, it's good for you. Yeah, looking good so far. <laughs> Everything's clear right now. So it's good for all of us. Right. right. <laughs> Right. You don't want to see her when she's cranky. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right. Same could be said for anybody. Right. Exactly. Smiles anybody from Jersey. across the board. <laughs> I relate to that, especially if you take our pork roll, egg, and cheese. Yeah. I know all you know uh -huh. what we're talking about yeah. if you're from the East Coast. Okay, so let's go to our weather this morning. It's a good morning to have a hearty breakfast because it's cool out there. Uh, we're waking up in the 50s, so it does feel different compared to yesterday, but in some good ways. We have dry roads. Fog is not an issue. We are waking up to cloudy skies, but sunshine is on the way, so do not forget your sunglasses for later today. We're at 56 degrees currently here in town, 53 in Navasota. Right now in Galveston, we're at 58 degrees. Winds have shifted right from the north, and it's going to be breezy today. Our wind's coming in around 10 to 20 miles per hour, but it's working as magic. That means lower humidity, comfortable temperatures, and this is about a 15 degree temperature drop from yesterday. So although it feels cool right now, you're going to really enjoy this afternoon. Lunchtime temperatures will be in the 60s. This afternoon, Afternoon will top off around 70 degrees. If you're heading out to rodeo tonight, not too shabby. You might want a light jacket as temperatures will start to cool down after sunset. Sophia, we'll chat about the weekend coming up next. Over to you. All right, thank you, Britta. Good morning. Let's take a look at your time saver traffic. Get you out the door. So far, so good. Looking green across the map. Let's take a look at the North Loop at Lockwood. We had a, an issue here earlier with a heavy truck stall, but that, of course, has since cleared, so that's all good. Let's take a look now at the East Beltway at Green Shadow North. That was another heavy truck stall here on the left-hand lane that was blocked. Cars could only use one lane to get around it. That is nice and clear for you this morning. And the North Freeway, this is the north side at Cross Timbers, all clear for your morning commute. Here are your morning drive times, guys. 24 minutes in from the Woodlands, 22 minutes in from K. 12 minutes from Laporte, and I love this one, 11 minutes in from Pearland. Let's keep it this way. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Sophia. This morning, we are continuing our coverage of the coronavirus crisis with a possible case in our area. So we've learned they're calling this a presumptive positive. They think it's going to be, but mm -hmm. they'll have to wait and see. Fort Bend County is where this is happening. The patient is a 70-year-old man. Now, presumptive positive means the patient suspected of having coronavirus is receiving treatment as if he is positive. But right now, they're awaiting results of a confirmation test from the CDC. Channel 2's Keith Garvin has more details from the Fort Bend County Health and Human Services building. This case is listed as presumptive positive, but they believe this patient does have the COVID-19 virus. The results came back yesterday afternoon, and health officials here in Fort Bend County say that it was only a matter of time before they saw their first case of coronavirus. We know this news is concerning. It is not unexpected. The first presumptive positive case of COVID-19 in Fort Bend County. Results came back at 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoon. Although they will undergo more testing, local health officials believe this is the real deal. We believe that the result is, in fact, an actual, uh, uh, an actual positive. It will undergo a confirmation process at the CDC. But at this point, we have no reason to believe that there's anything other than accurate. What we know about the patient, he's a male in his 70s. He tested positive after he traveled abroad and became ill upon returning to the United States. His symptoms were discovered by his personal physician, and he had no pre-existing conditions. The patient now is hospitalized and listed in stable condition. But citing HIPAA laws, health officials were extremely tight-lipped about what country the man traveled to, what airport he returned to, or when the tests were conducted. They do say at this point the situation appears to be isolated. As this case was associated with travel, at this time, we still have no evidence of community spread of COVID-19. The patient's test was conducted by the Houston Health Department Laboratory, which now has the ability to test for any possible cases in Southeast Texas. Results still will be sent to the CDC in Atlanta for verification, but they can be acted upon immediately. The big difference is that we're gonna be able to get test results much more quickly than we have in the past several weeks. 
House Keith Garvin reporting. Fort Bend County ISD is speaking out on how they plan to protect students in the district. Uh, they say they're going to hold classes as usual and they're monitoring the situation and will take guidance when it comes from the Centers for Disease Control. Spring break for the district's next week and school officials say students who got sick, especially if they traveled internationally over the break, uh, they should stay home. If we have a family or staff member who travels internationally and chooses to self-quarantine upon their return, we are going to make every effort to support their decision. So coming up at 5.30, our health reporter Haley Hernandez will have more from the district, including how they'll deal with absences after spring break. There is more coverage of this novel coronavirus at our website. Click to Houston.com. You get the latest stories along with information on symptoms and how to protect yourself. Well, new this morning, a neighbor's quick thinking might have saved one person's life after a house fire last night in Sunnyside. Firefighters originally believed people were trapped inside the home on Brinkley Street near Cullen. But when they did a search, they didn't find anyone. We're told the home is vacant, but a neighbor knew there was someone staying inside and alerted them before firefighters arrived. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Two days after Super Tuesday and the Democratic race for president looks completely different than it did at the beginning of the week. Uh, after a poor performance in Tuesday's primaries, uh, Michael Bloomberg's out and uh, throwing his endorsement and his resources behind Joe Biden. Biden has the lead now after a bunch of wins on Super Tuesday. 527 delegates uh, behind him, Bernie Sanders at 475, Elizabeth Warren with 48. Tulsi Gabbard has won. NBC News is still classifying California as too early to call. Sanders says those results would make the race a lot closer. Now, I haven't seen the latest uh, delegate uh, count, but my guess is that after California is thrown into the hopper, uh, it's going to be pretty close. So we may be up by a few. Biden may be up by a few. Uh, Joe Biden was declared the winner in 11 Super Tuesday states, including Texas. Bernie Sanders took five. The results from California won't be in until the state's mail-in ballots are counted. 5.07 now. The Astros are in the middle of spring training, but right now it's almost time for opening day. Yep, ahead at five, what you need to know if you're interested in getting tickets for this regular season. And good morning. It's a cooler start to our Thursday, and we are in for a beautiful afternoon. A lot of sunshine out there. Right now, we have temperatures of 57 degrees, 58 at the coast, and it's a little breezy. We'll take you through your afternoon forecast breezy. coming up. Houston.com. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Let's get you out the door right now. Nice and smooth and easy. All right, it is all green for you across town. Let's take a look at the North Beltway 8 at Hardy East. Cars are just cruising right along. That is what we like to see at this time of morning. One more shot here. This is 610 East Loop at Market Street. Everybody's getting out, getting moving, getting to work, uh, having to do what they got to do, right? Get out there and live your life. All right, time saver traffic wheel. This is 24... <laughs> 24 minutes in from the Woodlands, 10 minutes in from Pearland, guys, back to you. Sophia, you just made me smile. I love it. We got to start things off on a positive note. For kids getting ready for school this morning, a light jacket's a good idea, at least a light sweater. We have temperatures that are running about 15 degrees cooler than yesterday, so you will feel the difference. We're in the 50s, and that's what we're expecting for drop-off. Meanwhile, for pickup, it's going to be a gorgeous day. The clouds that we're waking up to will be gone. We're expecting sunshine, and we'll top off around 70 degrees, a perfect afternoon to skip the carpool line and just walk to the park. We'll take a look at your weekend forecast coming up. Over to you. All right, thank you, Britta. The Astros will be back on the field this afternoon for another spring training game. I've got the uh, Boston Red Sox on tap today. Astros uh, fell to the Marlins 2-1 to one yesterday. First pitch today is at 12.05 before the game. Single game Houston Astros regular season tickets go on sale this morning. We're less than a month away from the home opener against the Angels. Those tickets I mentioned go on sale at 9 o'clock. Meanwhile, back here at home, the Rockets are looking to get back to their winning ways as they host the Los Angeles Clippers tonight. This comes after the Knicks ended the team's six-game winning streak on Monday. They beat the Rockets at Madison Square Garden for the first time since 2009. Fingers crossed the Rockets can lift off tonight. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. inside the Toyota Center. Remember that video of a Texas man licking a carton of Bluebell ice cream and then putting it back in a grocery store freezer? Well, that left the man in a world of trouble. The sentence a judge just handed down for that crime that went viral is coming up. And next, a big announcement is coming in the future of space. What NASA plans to reveal today about the agency's next mission to the moon. Carpet Giant. 
Hey, wake up and look outside. It's 513. <laughs> it's feeling pretty good out there. A little chilly, 56 degrees. But Britt is going to tell us how much we will warm up this afternoon. Right, we're going to get an update uh, now on those deadly tornadoes that happened this week in Tennessee. Now, residents there are now recovering after the storm swept through and killed at least 24 people. The city of Cookville was one of the hardest hit areas. Officials say cleanup will take days, weeks, possibly months, since more than 100 structures were damaged or destroyed. But many residents say they're just happy to be alive. It's a miracle. God put his hand over us. Yeah. God put his hand over us. He touched us. He didn't see the community come together. That's what I served for. That's what I signed up to do. And to see it actually in action here, I'm speechless. It, um, it overwhelms me. Well, many members in the community of Cookville are still without power. There are three people still missing. Now we want to go to breaking news out of Fort Bend County. That's where deputies tell us a man has been found dead at a concrete plant in Rosenberg. The man was found trapped in a concrete hopper car. Our Vincent Crivelli joins us from that plant, which is near Highway 59 and Daly Road. Um, so what was, do we know what the guy was doing there, Vincent? Yeah, Owen, good morning. I just spoke with deputies. They clarified the victim is a man who works here, and right now they're focusing their attention on a concrete hopper. Authorities say overnight a person became trapped in a concrete hopper. A concrete hopper is a large metal piece of equipment used to accurately distribute concrete. A worker called 911 and said the person was unconscious, but they couldn't tell if he was breathing. First responders rushed to the concrete plant and found the person trapped. With all the surrounding equipment, they had a hard time reaching and checking out the person. However, when they did get to him, he was declared deceased. And the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office is spearheading this investigation right now. I'm working to get more details. Check back for an update around 6. Stay tuned. For now, reporting live in Rosenberg, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. You got it, Vincent. Thank you. 515 right now. R. Kelly's expected to go before a judge in Illinois on new charges today. The embattled singer has been told to appear in a Chicago courtroom for a status hearing. Uh, he's facing a new charge related to allegations he sexually abused a minor for four years starting in 1997. Multiple jurisdictions have already charged R. Kelly with several counts of sexual abuse and other crimes. He has pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Well, the man responsible for the infamous Bluebell ice cream scandal has been sentenced in connection to the case. 24-year-old DeAndrean Anderson was sentenced to 180 days, probated over two years, but he has to serve 30 days in jail up front. So back in August of last year, remember this video? He posted on Facebook taking ice cream off the shelf at a Port Arthur Walmart opening the carton, licking it, and putting it back in the freezer. So Anderson claims that he bought the ice cream later. Still gross. Mm -hmm. A sad day for researchers at College Station. The world's first ever cloned cat has died. Cece, or copycat, died at the age of 18 after being diagnosed with kidney failure. She was the first ever cat to be cloned in groundbreaking research done at Texas A&M University. University officials say she was adopted by a researcher after she was born and lived a happy, normal life. And I guess a pretty long one, 18. 18. Is that pretty good for exactly. cats? I think that I think is so. good for cats, yeah. Well, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine will lay out some of the details of NASA's new Moon to Mars plan today. The event will be held at the Center for Strategic and International Studies headquarters in Washington, D.C. The plan involves human exploration of the moon by the year 2024 and preparations for future missions to Mars. 517 at Channel 2 News today. It's going to be, oh man, I hit the wrong button. It's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be a really an exciting day, another exciting day out at the rodeo. Yeah, last night was all about old school country with a performance from Willie Nelson. But now it's time for something a little more fast paced. Okay. Tonight, Becky G is taking the stage at the Houston Rodeo. It's her first appearance and you can still get tickets if you want to go. The show starts at 645 this evening. Now here's what's really cool this year. Something new. The rodeo is hold, holding its first ever sensory friendly day at the carnival for the kids at opens early uh, at 10 a.m. for three hours, everything will be a bit toned down. So when we looked at Sensory Friendly Day, we wanted to bring down the lights. We wanted to bring down the noise. But most importantly, we want everyone who's here that day to understand that the other participants, the other families that are here enjoying the Sensory Friendly Day are experiencing life the same way they are. 
Everyone participating in Sensory Friendly Day will get a chance to ride more than 40 rides, including the monster trucks, teacups, the super slide. There will also be carnival games and all the good food. It uh, goes from 10 till 1 today. All right, that sounds like fun. Always fun at the rodeo. And it, Britta, it sounds like it's going to be a great day to be outside. It is. And hats off to them for doing that. Super important. So I hope you all have a great time heading out there. It's going to be a little bit cool as you show up at 10 a.m. So have a little sweater for the kids. Uh, we're waking up to cloudy skies and our Kaplan Sinus Relief camera. But sunshine will be taking over. And that will warm us up as we go into the afternoon. So if you're going to stick around after the beginning of sensory, sensory Friendly Day, it's going to be really warm in the afternoon. Uh, temperatures right now 57 degrees downtown. We're in the upper 50s in Galveston. It is a little breezy and if you have allergy issues you want to keep that in mind our winds are coming in about 10 to 20 miles per hour but because they're coming in from the north we are waking up to cooler temperatures. It feels really refreshing. We're about 15 degrees cooler than this time yesterday. Here's the warm up 60s for lunchtime topping off at 70 degrees. It is going to be a beautiful beautiful Thursday. Here's your allergy report card. So we're at a high level for tree pollen with the wind being so high today. If you have allergies make sure that you're on top of it. Here's a look at satellite and radar. The mess from yesterday is moving out to the east behind it. Nothing but clear real estate. We're looking really good all the way up towards Colorado. Nothing but clear skies. We do have a cold front on the way. The good news is not going to bring us any rain. Most of us will not even notice it, but it will be slightly cooler on Saturday behind that cold front with temperatures in the 60s. As we head into the second half of our weekend, a slight warm up as winds come back in from the south and we'll keep it dry. Heading into next week, though, those rain chances come creeping back in. We have this weather system to the north of us. It's going to stay to the north of us for the majority of the week and that just means that we're going to tap into that south breeze bringing in more cloud cover, more humidity and a little more heat. Stray showers are part of the forecast but you'll notice a 20 to 30 percent chance pretty much every day next week because that system's kind of hanging off to the north of us. 72 degrees for today. We're going to clear out the sky so that means tonight it's going to get chilly. Bring your jacket to rodeo tonight. We'll wake up in the upper 40s tomorrow morning. Just a beautiful weekend. Keep in mind that it is time to spring forward so change your clothes. Saturday night and then next week we continue our warm-up bringing the humidity and a few spotty showers not looking bad Sophia over to you what I'd like to hear all right let's get you out the door map is looking green this morning and we haven't had any issues so far that is what we like to see this early in the morning taking it to the west side this is Katie freeway at West Loop everybody's moving along quite nicely there South side, Highway 288 at Orem. This is typically an issue, Highway 288 coming inbound, but so far so good. Let's take a look now at the north side, North Beltway 8 at Hardy East. This is what we like to see. And one more shot for your morning commute, 610 East Loop at Market Street. Everyone's moving along very nicely. These are your traffic times. So far, so good. 24 minutes in from the Woodlands, 22 minutes in from Katy, 17 in from Baytown, 11 minutes in from Pearland. Back to you. All right, thank you, Sophia. This morning, we're tracking Fort Bend ISD's reaction to a possible coronavirus case in Fort Bend County. Coming up in our next half hour, health reporter Haley Hernandez will join us live with the superintendent's message to families about spring break travel. They're calling it Joe Mentum. I'm Tracy Potts. Coming up, Joe Biden gets a big boost out of Super Tuesday. We'll tell you about Bernie Sanders' plan to catch up. Comfortably. It's 524 here at Channel 2 News Today. Uh, Decision 2020 followed up on the Democratic side of things. Uh, here's where we stand after Super Tuesday. As California continues to count votes, Joe Biden has mounted an incredible comeback as the other candidates try to figure out where to take their campaigns from here. Here's Tracy Potts from Washington. Owen, good morning. They're calling it Joe-mentum. Joe Biden says he's picked up $7 million in donations just since Super Tuesday. But remember, California? Still outstanding. That could be a game changer. Former Vice President Joe Biden is riding an election high. After winning 10 of 14 states on Super Tuesday, he's vowing not to go negative on Senator Bernie Sanders. Doesn't do anything to help any one of the candidates who are left in the campaign. So we have to keep our eye on the ball. I like Joe Biden. He's a very decent guy. Sanders still waiting on results from California that will decide how that state's 400 plus delegates will be split. Moving forward, Sanders admits he's got a problem with black voters. We're running against somebody who has touted his relationship with Barack Obama for eight years. Barack Obama is enormously popular in this country in general and the African-American community. 
Sanders' progressive supporters insist he is still very much in the game. Every single exit poll showed that the voters actually cared about many of the policies that Senator Bernie Sanders is campaigning on. An aide told staff that Senator Elizabeth Warren is reassessing her campaign after placing third in her home state. Michael Bloomberg dropped out. Like other candidates, he's endorsing Biden. Bloomberg can only donate $2,800 to Biden's campaign, but he can also set up a super PAC and contribute a lot more. In Washington, I'm Tracy Potts, KPRC Channel 2 News. Uh, fresh off uh, that strong Super Tuesday showing, Joe Biden sits down with the Today Show Savannah Guthrie about the state of the race as he and Bernie Sanders now go head to head for the nomination. Do you feel confident that you can sew up this nomination before the convention or do you think this is a battle that's going to go all the way to Milwaukee? The next hurdle is a place and I'm anxious to campaign in. We're going to go from the Dakotas all the way to, to, to Michigan, places where I think I can do well. And if I do that, it just piles up more support and more momentum. That's my hope. That's my expectation. But I'm not looking all the way down the road till the convention. This morning on the Today Show, we'll hear more of Savannah's interview with the newly minted Democratic frontrunner. Alex Trebek is sending a message to his fans about his battle with stage four pancreatic cancer. Coming up, the inspirational message the Jeopardy host is sharing one year after his diagnosis. And good morning, guys. A couple stalls across town, not causing too much trouble. Coming up, I'm going to let you know what you can expect for your morning commute in just a few minutes. And we're waking up to cooler temperatures. Grab a light jacket, but it's going to be a beautiful afternoon. We'll talk about those afternoon temperatures and highlight your rodeo forecast coming up. Cool. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. This morning, we have team coverage of the presumptive positive case of the coronavirus in Fort Bend County. What officials are telling us about the patient as they wait official confirmation from the CDC? The possible case has Fort Bend School District officials on guard. The changes they're making for students as they get ready to go on spring break. And we're continuing to track the devastation in the Nashville area after the deadly tornadoes there earlier this week. We've got to look at dramatic before and after images that show just how little is left. Good morning, everyone. I'm Amy Davison for Tanaya this morning. It's 5.30. Hi there. I'm Owen Conflenti. Sophia's on traffic. Hi. Good morning. I think that folks heard my, my call out this morning. That's yeah. That everybody chill. Don't get crazy. <laughs> and, and live your life. And live your best life, <laughs> you know, and we'll be good. Get we'll going be and live your best life. And they've listened. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always appreciated, that's yeah. for sure. If, if Traffic's looking good. That's, that's good. All right. That's good. And life. we're in for sunshine today, so that's a really positive thing. We don't have to worry about fog. We don't have to worry about wet roads. As you wake up, you are going to notice that we have cloudy skies, but the sun will be taking over after lunchtime. So there's a live look at those cloudy skies on our Kaplan Sinus Relief camera. Uh, temperatures right now generally in the 50s. We're at 56 degrees at Bush Airport. Nice and cool in the north of town in the low 50s right now in Montgomery County. Galveston 58 degrees and you're at 58 degrees currently in Pearland. Our winds have shifted. They're right from the north. That means a lower humidity, really nice crisp temperatures. But with our winds coming in about 10 to 20 miles per hour this afternoon, it is going to pick up the tree pollen. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Temperatures this morning, 15 degrees cooler than yesterday morning. You will feel the difference. A good idea to have a sweater on your kids as they head out the door to school, but they will not need it this afternoon. In fact, lunchtime, we warm up to the mid 60s. Late this afternoon, we're topping off around 70 degrees. We're heading into a beautiful evening. I have your rodeo forecast straight ahead. Over to you. All right, Britta, thank you. Good morning. Time for your time saver traffic. Like I said, it's looking clean and clear and green out there on the roads. Just wanted to remind you of this construction. This is Spur 527 northbound. This is the exit ramp that's closed to Brazos Street. This is until further notice, so just remember that one. Keep that in mind when you're out there. All right, let's take a look at... South side, this is 288 at Orem. Always a trouble spot here, but so far so good. No issues to report. North Beltway, this is the Hardy East. You can see traffic just starting to pick up. Everybody's heading out the door. One more shot here, 610 East Loop. This is at Market Street. Moving right along. That's what we like to see. All right, here are your time saver drive times. 25 minutes in from the Woodlands, 11 minutes in from Pearland, 20 minutes in from Clear Lake, guys.
All right, Sophia. Uh, let's go to the latest here on the coronavirus crisis. Fort Bend County says it is dealing with its first presumptive positive case. It involves a 70-year-old man, and it would be the first case in the Houston area. Yeah, Channel 2's Brittany Jeffers joins us live now with more details. Brittany, what is the county saying about this patient? Yeah, it was just yesterday that those results came in and we heard from county health officials and they told us during that press conference that they believe that it was just a matter of time before we saw our first case of coronavirus. It's the first case of presumptive positive COVID-19 in Fort Bend County, but health officials reiterated it's best to stay calm. However, I want to make sure that everybody understands that that is uh, something that we have been planning for, we have been preparing for, for some period of time. The patient is a man in his 70s who health officials say recently traveled abroad. They say he became ill after returning to the U.S. Citing HIPAA laws, they were extremely tight-lipped about what country the man traveled to, what airport he returned to, or where the tests were conducted. They did confirm his symptoms were discovered by his personal physician and that he had no pre-existing conditions. Right now, they say the patient is hospitalized and listed in stable condition. At this point, officials believe the situation appears to be isolated, but say there are things that you can do to help. This is a rapidly evolving situation, and we know it's unsettling for our residents. We want you to remember that there are things that you can do to protect yourselves and your families. Remaining calm is of utmost importance. Officials say you can help by not going to the ER unless it's critical. If you have symptoms like cough, fever, or respiratory problems, contact your doctor. Practice good hygiene habits, wash your hands often with soap after eating, using the restroom, or coughing and sneezing. So looking ahead on all of this, we are told that confirmation of the patient's results are going to be coming back from the CDC here in the next day or two. After that, they will be looking to see uh, who the man has come in contact with. Reporting live here this morning in Fort Bend County, I'm Brittany Jeffers, KPRC Channel 2 News. Okay, Brittany. Uh, shortly after health officials in Fort Bend County held that news conference, school officials started to alert parents. Yeah, emails were sent out to families in the district alerting them about the case and what they need to know with spring break just days away. Channel 2 health reporter Haley Hernandez is live at Fort Bend ISD headquarters in Sugarland. So Haley, what is the superintendent telling parents in that district? Yeah, good morning, guys. So the superintendent is um, really just reiterating that there is no reason to believe this is going around schools right now. Um, and again, that case in Fort Bend is just a presumptive positive case. We don't have confirmation on that now, but parents are naturally extra concerned about their children. So the I face, uh, Fort Bend ISD is trying to stay one step ahead of them. In this video message to parents last night, the superintendent says they have taken all precautionary measures to prevent the spread of all communicable diseases and will continue to hold classes right now. But as we are headed into spring break next week and families travel both domestically and abroad, he's giving permission to stay home and self quarantine without penalties of unexcused absences following spring break. For purposes of determining your exemptions this spring, absences following spring break will not count against exemption status. As for other absences, if we have a family or staff member who travels internationally and chooses to self-quarantine upon their return, we're going to make every effort to support their decision. Yeah, so health officials have urged that if you travel abroad and then feel the need to self-quarantine at home, you would need about two weeks of supplies inside your home. If you've been out to grocery stores, you've noticed that has caused quite a rush on supplies. But coming up at 6 o'clock, I'll tell you exactly what a self-quarantine means and what you would really need in your household. For now, I'm reporting live at Fort Bend ISD. I'm Haley Hernandez, KPRC Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Haley. Speaking of self-quarantine, this morning, four University of Houston students and two staff members are in self-quarantine. They recently returned from a trip to Italy and South, Corona, South Korea, where coronavirus cases have soared. U of H says two others are set to return by the end of the week, and they will also be self-quarantined. So the quarantine period will last 14 days. Vice President Pence will travel to Olympia, Washington, and Minnesota's 3M headquarters today to assess the current coronavirus 
coronavirus outbreak there. The vice president will meet with Governor Jay Inslee of Washington to discuss the situation after 10 people have died from the coronavirus in Washington state. He will also meet with leaders at Minnesota's 3M headquarters, which has been contracted by the government to produce more face masks. The planned trips come after he and the president met with CEOs from airlines to talk about how to stop the spread of this virus. Yeah, I think where these people are flying, it's safe to fly, and large portions of the world are very safe to fly. So we don't want to say anything other than that. And uh, we have closed down certain sections of the world, frankly, and they've sort of automatically closed them also. The House of Representatives passed legislation for roughly $8 million in funding to combat the virus yesterday. We've got more coverage of the novel coronavirus at our website. Click to Houston.com. You'll get a look at the latest stories along with information on symptoms and how to protect yourself. 538 at Channel 2, breaking news from North Houston. A body found in the back of a car that was found engulfed in flames overnight. The person was so badly burned they were unrecognizable. It happened at an apartment complex parking lot, Werner Street and Walt Hall Drive around midnight. Investigators know the victim is a man, but they say they'll have to do an autopsy before they can identify him. They do believe foul play was involved, and police are working to determine if the car the man was found in belongs to him or someone else. Also breaking, police are investigating a deadly overnight shooting in southwest Houston. This happened just before 1230 at the Meadows on the Muse Apartments off Ashford Meadow. Upon arrival, officers found one man shot near the doorway of an apartment. Emergency crews tried to save the victim, but he died at the scene. Right now, police do not have a motive. Investigators plan to review the complex's security cameras. It's a state of emergency in Tennessee after the deadliest day of tornadoes in seven years. At least two people are dead and entire neighborhoods have been leveled. These before and after images give a glimpse of the strength of tor the tornadoes that moved through Nashville and the surrounding communities. Officials are still working, trying to piece together an accurate picture of the deadly trail of devastation left behind. The storm hit in the middle of the night. At least one in the East Nashville area was an EF3, and it was a powerful EF4 tornado packing winds up to 175 miles an hour that leveled neighborhoods in Putnam County. Cried a little bit, I'm, I'm numb. I'm shocked. Um, we've, I don't, I just don't have enough words. Well, Putnam County estimates 100 homes were destroyed by the tornado. Cleanup efforts in that area could take days. The long awaited murder trial of millionaire Robert Durst is set to continue today. Opening statements from the prosecution and defense were heard yesterday. The real estate uh, tycoon is accused of murdering his friend Susan Berman in her California home in December of 2000. Investigators believe the murder was a cover-up uh, to Durst uh, was made to cover up Durst's alleged connection to the still unsolved uh, disappearance of his first wife in 1982. In the past, he was also accused of murdering his neighbor in Galveston. While Durst admitted to killing him, he said it was in self-defense and he was acquitted. A new Caney ISD teacher has resigned after being charged with having an inappropriate relationship with a student. 41-year-old Rhiannon Petty, who worked as a health science teacher at Porter High School, was arrested Tuesday afternoon. According to court documents, a complaint was filed last month by students, by students' parents rather, that Petty and the girl were outside of the school acting as if they were a couple. After further investigation and cell phone evidence, officials found probable cause against Petty. In a statement released, New Caney ISD says, quote, student safety is a top priority for New Caney ISD and the district will always take immediate and appropriate action to protect the safety of students and staff. Well, it's 541 here at Channel 2 News today. Let's get you out the door. Britta is standing by here. She got our forecast. A little bit chilly this morning. Yeah, a little cool out there. So we've had a 15 degree temperature drop since yesterday morning. So grab a light sweater. This is a live look into Galveston. Palm trees are blowing around. Our winds are coming in at 20 miles per hour at the coast, about 10 here in town. It's going to be a breezy afternoon, but it's nice and cool and refreshing. We have temperatures in the 50s. This afternoon will top off around 70 degrees. Heading out to rodeo tonight should be a good one. Sweater's a good idea. Becky G is our headliner for tonight. We'll have temperatures at 61 degrees at 9 p.m. So we'll be cooling down to the 50s as you head home. We'll talk about your weekend coming up. Sophia, over to you. All right, Britta, thank you. Well, nothing to see here.
Well, I'll show you anyway. <laughs> Looking good so far. Let's take a look at the East Tex Freeway here in just a bit. This, yeah, there it is. This is Lyons. We did have reports of a stall on the right-hand shoulder. Wasn't even affecting traffic at all. And you can see it's cleared. Everybody's moving along. Let's take a look. This is the Southwest Freeway at West Park Tollway. You can see more and more cars. They're picking up. They're heading out the door this morning. And everything's moving along really nicely. One more shot here. This is your drive times. We like to see those in the green. 25 minutes in from the Woodlands, 24 minutes in from Sugarland. Katie, 23, 15 in from Cyprus. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Sophia. He has been hosting Jeopardy for nearly 40 years, and his public battle with pancreatic cancer has touched the hearts of people across the nation. Ahead, what Alex Trebek is saying about his health now and what it means for the future of the show. We'll be right back. It's 543. Ooh. We have another Bells for Abigail video to share with you, a courageous cancer fighter celebrating the end of his treatment. His name is Brendan Tate. There you go, Brendan. Brendan was nine years old when he was diagnosed with stage two non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. That was August 2016. He completed six months of treatment, and then he rang his bell February 8th, 2017. He's now three years cancer-free. Now, if you have a video of your child ringing the end of treatment bell, you can submit it at click2houston.com forward slash bells for Abigail. The time now is 545. It has been one year since Jeopardy host Alex Trebek was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Yeah, and now he's taking to social media to give an update on how he's doing. The one year survival rate for stage four pancreatic cancer patients is 18%. I'm very happy to report I have just reached that marker. And you know something? If I, no, if we, because so many of us are involved in this same situation, if we take it just one day at a time with a positive attitude, anything is possible. The 79-year-old has hosted Jeopardy since 1984. He told reporters in January he plans to keep working as long as his skills have not diminished. And they obviously have not. Exactly. Well, with spring break coming up, many people are now weighing the option of taking trips out of the country, but they're concerned with the spread of the coronavirus. What travel experts say you should be doing if you are indeed concerned about that affecting your trip, it's 546 right now. Come. Good morning, your time is 548. We are waking up to cooler temperatures this morning, so grab a light jacket. We're at 57 degrees downtown, 56 on the southwest side. At the coast, we're in the upper 50s, but notice our winds, 10 to 20 miles per hour. It's breezy out there, and that is gonna be an issue as we go into the afternoon. With winds coming in 10 to 20 miles per hour, it's gonna pick up the pollen, so I'll let you know your pollen count and what you need to look out for. Coming up next, over to you, Amy. All right, thank you, Britta. It is that time of year when many of us are planning to travel for spring break or summer vacation, but the coronavirus outbreak is threatening to put many trips on hold and worrying a lot of people, leaving people wondering, should they get trip insurance or will they get all their money back if they do? Well, I spoke to travel experts to get some answers. As the number of coronavirus cases rise, so do concerns from travelers. I work in a hotel, and um, I, I know we've lost business because of it. Right now we just kind of like stay home right now, stay safe. <laughs> Fears contributing to a growing interest in travel insurance. So far, a total trip cost of $1,000. With phones ringing off the hook at the call center for Insure My Trip, a site that compares travel insurance plans from dozens of providers. Okay. Right now, we're seeing growth numbers in the 200% range. Most policies will not cover a trip cancellation due to coronavirus concerns. A premium cancel for any reason policy allows you to do just that. But it is time sensitive and expensive. One quote for a $5,000 cruise priced a typical travel insurance plan at $144. The cancel for any reason policy was $563. I think you really have to carefully consider whether or not the premiums that you're going to pay for that type of coverage are worth their cost. You'll want to check directly with travel providers first, many now offering to waive change and cancellation fees for affected areas. You just have to be careful. 
but also you, you can't just live in a state of paranoia either. Concessions travel companies hope will keep Americans on the move in the wake of an outbreak. Now, while travel insurance may help cover a medical emergency during your trip, each policy has different exclusions and levels of coverage. So you want to make sure you shop around, read the fine print before buying any policy, and you'll also have more options if you purchase insurance when you make your first payment for that trip. Mm. So, yeah, I talked to a travel agent yesterday who said she was slammed with canceling trips for people and frustrated because... You know, she's not going to get paid, and she was like, a lot of these trips, people are just scared, but it's fine to go to the places where they book their trips. Yeah, well, you say that, but if you can't relax and enjoy yourself, you know, True. You, you, I understand. All right, 551 here at Channel 2. Britta is here with us. Good morning. It's not good chilly. Morning. I mean, it's a little cool, no, it's right? It's a little cool. Yeah. I mean, we've dropped about 15 degrees compared to yesterday morning, so that's always a good gauge on how you're going to feel. Uh, you're going to feel a little cooler than you did yesterday. This is a live look over downtown. We have cloudy skies this morning. We're waiting camp in the 50s to so grab a light sweater. Uh, it's a little breezy out there. Our winds coming in 10 to 20 miles per hour, so that will make it feel a little cool, but we are in for a beautiful day. Sunshine is going to return today. Uh, lunchtime temperatures will be in the 60s, topping off at 70 degrees for tonight uh, for this afternoon. Then for tonight, we'll cool things off after sunset. So if you're heading out to rodeo, make sure you bring a light sweater with you. Because wind is a part of our forecast today, keep in mind that the tree pollen is very high. So if you are an allergy sufferer, if you have a loved one that is, you need to be on top of your symptoms today. We do have nice clear skies in the forecast for this afternoon. As we look off to the northwest, nothing is heading in our direction. But we actually have a little bit of a weak cool front that we're expecting for the end of the work week. This is going to be for Friday night into Saturday morning. Not going to bring us rainfall. Most of us will not even notice it. But it does mean that Saturday will be slightly cooler in the 60s. Meanwhile, this area of high pressure moves off to the east. South wind comes back on Sunday, and we're back to the 70s. Heading into next week, nice and warm. Pushing into the upper 70s, about 80 degrees. But with these weather systems that will be just to the north of us, that will keep us warm and muggy with just a slight chance of an afternoon shower. So no washout in our forecast. We'll notice about 20 to 30 percent chance of rain each and every day of next week. But look at that weekend forecast. So beautiful, Sophia. Nice, cool mornings, pleasant afternoons. Just do not forget to spring forward. All right, Britta, thank you. This time of morning, more and more cars hitting the road. Traffic definitely starting to pick up. I want to remind you before we get to some camera shots here, this is construction at Spur 527 northbound. Exit ramp is closed to Brazos. This is going to affect traffic. Just keep that in mind while you're in that area. Okay, let's take a look at the North Beltway 8. This is at the westbound lanes. Westbound lanes, there is some sort of stall blocking and slowing this down right here. You can see the backup here. Uh, this is westbound. So keep that in mind if you are heading westbound in that direction. We're going to take another shot. This is 610 West Loop northbound. There's a stall in the northbound lane. See them right over there. Everybody's kind of shimmying across, but it's not affecting uh, traffic too badly there at all. But as you can see, travelers hitting the road. Everybody's getting out, getting to work, doing their thing. Let's take a look at your time saver traffic times. Still green. We are still in the green, so that is the good news. 15 minutes in from Cyprus, 17 minutes in from Baytown. We'll keep you posted if this changes, guys. Okay, Sophia. They say they were just supporting their cheerleading daughters, but now a group of dads from Linden, New Jersey is going viral. Yeah, you're going to flip after seeing this. Take a look. Meet the dancing, prancing dads of South Jersey, known as the Daddy Bolts. So across six practices, the flying fathers weren't fooling around. And in the end, they brought plenty of moves and spirit and a performance that caught the eyes of way more people than they expected. We just, you know, are doing everything we can to show them that, you know, we want to be involved in their lives. Just put this big smile on my face and it just makes me so happy. The thought that he can do it is absolutely crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh, look at them. That's, wow. That's no joke. Yeah. That's dangerous. That is, and pretty amazing. Especially for some old guys. Right. Good job, guys. <laughs> Through these practices, the Daddy Bolts members say they developed a bond. And along with their daughters, they're now giving audiences something worth flipping for. <laughs> the New Jersey Cheer Dads will be on the Today Show coming up. Apparently, this was their first routine. But obviously, man, now there's more to come. They're really good. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with the stunts. <laughs> hey, when Easy, yeah. easy. Pull a hammy. Yeah, right. Oh. Hey, when reporting on the coronavirus, yes. we've mentioned self-quarantine a lot. 
So coming up at 6, health reporter Haley Hernandez asked the health department exactly what you need to have at home if you have to self-quarantine. We're talking about that coming up. And trending now just before 6. This is not your typical barber school in Las Vegas. Behind these barber chairs and buzzing clippers are men and women dedicated to helping kids during Nevada Reading Week. The program Read With My Barber all began four years ago in partnership with the city. It's an initiative to increase literacy in community, communities that may be suffering with poverty or with those who have low access to books. Is it really empowers our barbers and our business community to come and partner with us and create a solution for a challenge that we're having as a community, which is literacy for our youth. Put down the cell phones for a minute, put down the games, and let's read a book together. While Nevada Reading Week is only once a year, those inside Masterpiece Barber College are committed to keeping the momentum going for a lifetime. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Developing this morning, Fort Bend County says the novel coronavirus is here, and today we're awaiting confirmation from the Centers for Disease Control. Plus, a horrific death in Rosenberg, a man trapped in concrete at a plant. What we know about the victim this morning. A cooler start uh, from our weather department. Uh, don't worry about your jackets and umbrellas, though. Breezy B's got the beautiful <laughs> forecast. It is a little breezy. Good morning. Uh, it's just about 6 o'clock now on this Thursday. I'm Owen Conflenti. And I'm Amy Davis in for Tania this morning. We're tracking your weather, but we want to talk about traffic first. Yeah, we can chat about it. There's not a lot going on out there. Traffic is picking up. More and more people are hitting the road, getting out there, doing their thing. But... They're being very polite and watching out for each other, which oh, I like. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Living Fantastic. their best life. Living their best yeah. life. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> thing. And we are looking great today. We are waking up to cloudy skies, but sunshine's going to return in a huge way. It's yeah. going to be a beautiful Thursday. I know. It makes everybody happy, right? <laughs> I'll stick you outside, show you those cloudy skies over downtown. Uh, temperatures are in the 50s, so light sweater, not a bad idea, especially for kids waiting at the bus stop. We're 55 degrees currently in Katy. Low to mid 50s in Montgomery County. 56 in Angleton and temperatures right now in Galveston at 58 degrees. Our winds are now coming in from the north. That means we'll have lower humidity today, but it is going to be breezy with winds coming in 10 to 20 miles per hour. So if you have allergy issues, the pollen is still really high and that wind will pick up the pollen. Temperatures are running about 15 degrees cooler compared to yesterday, so you are going to feel the difference. As we go into the afternoon, it's going to be beautiful. Nothing but sunshine topping off at 70 degrees. Sophia, we'll talk about the weekend still ahead. Over to you. All right. Thank you, Britta. Let's take a look at your time saver traffic this morning. It is picking up. Like I said out there, more and more folks getting up, getting out on the road, heading to work. Uh, let's take a look at this first camera, North Beltway 8 at the North Toll Plaza. We're telling you about this over here in this stall. This is westbound. You can see that back up there, all those lights. That's a backup. There is a stall right up here. Um, we're trying to figure out exactly what's going on there and how long that's going to take, but it's since it has since um, eased up a little bit. Traffic is a little bit easier in that part of town. All right, 610 West Loop at Memorial. This is northbound lanes. We did have reports. Yep, there it is. That stall over here. Uh, cars are kind of going around that. Still not affecting traffic too badly. One more shot before we get to your drive time. Southwest Freeway at Beach Nut. Nice and clear and wide open for you. One more shot. This is your drive times looking good. Nice and green all across the map. 14 minutes in from Pearland, 27 in from the Woodlands. Guys, back to you. Okay, Sophia, thank you. 602 now developing this morning. The Centers for Disease Control is working to confirm whether or not a Fort Bend County man is the first novel coronavirus case in our area. Health officials said the test came back as uh, presumptively positive. If confirmed, this will be the first case in Texas outside of the overseas evacuees who were sent here to the San Antonio area. So here's what we know about the case. The man's reportedly in his 70s. He had traveled abroad and then uh, came home and got sick. His personal doctor identified the symptoms. He's in the hospital now and said to be in stable condition. Well, Fort Bend ISD is taking no chances following that possible coronavirus case in the county. In a video released by the district superintendent, Fort Bend ISD still wants families to enjoy the upcoming spring break, but they say if families travel somewhere that leads to them being quarantined upon return, absences will not be counted against the students. Normally, students can only miss about 17 days per school year. Well, parents of immunocompromised children will also be able to keep their children home if they're concerned about about exposure. 
Now, Homeland Security says if this becomes a pandemic, we should all be prepared to self-quarantine at home for two weeks. Our health reporter Haley Hernandez is here with details on what that means. Uh, like, if, I guess the basic question, Haley, like, do we need to go stock up uh, supplies at home? Right, that's the fear right now. I mean, if you've been to a grocery store, you see it. Grocery stores are out of some supplies. Amazon is sold out of these things. But is that really necessary? I asked the health department, when would we need to have these supplies ready and what exactly does that include? Here are people stocking up on bottled water. Is this for coronavirus? And if so, is that really necessary? There's no reason for people to be fearful right now. Mm -hmm. It is time to, you know, have a plan, make a kit, stay informed. Dr. David Purse, the health authority with the Houston Health Department, says in short, it's always good practice to be prepared for a natural disaster or given recent events to be ready to self-quarantine in case of coronavirus. But he's not encouraging a mad dash on grocery stores. A lot of this mass buying of things right now is perhaps a little bit premature and perhaps part of the uh, the fear that's going on. Mm -hmm. But you do need to be thinking ahead. This is what the CDC was trying to get across about a week ago is that people do need to start thinking ahead about, you know, what if the schools should close? What if we have to get to the point that we, we do that? We've seen that happening around the globe. Right. What if we have that? What are you going to do in terms of child care? So now is the time for people to start thinking about those sorts of things. Most importantly, stay calm, stay home if you're sick, and wash your hands often. So be coming up with your plan. If you are exposed to coronavirus, what would you need to stay home for two weeks? You know, during hurricane season, we do talk about bottled water, but in this case, the health department is reminding you that you would still have running water to your home. So maybe think about supplies like baby supplies, pet supplies, food, and prescriptions. Reporting live, I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you for that, Haley. 605 is still waiting for a results on a possible novel coronavirus case at Rice University. The tests were sent to the Centers for Disease Control earlier in the week. For a researcher who traveled, oh, traveled overseas, the results are expected today or tomorrow. Uh, that researcher had contact with 17 others at Rice who are all being asked to self-quarantine for now. And four U of H students and two staffers are also being required to self-quarantine by the university. This after they traveled overseas to Italy and South Korea, two countries with larger outbreaks. Two others will be returning this week as well and will also be asked to self-quarantine for 14 days away from the campus. This morning, final touches will be put in a coronavirus preparedness exercise that Harris County is doing. Uh, so far, again, no reported cases, but Judge Lena Hidalgo will be at the exercise. Uh, we'll also be talking with the health leaders there. The event's happening at 9.30 this morning. For more on the coronavirus, uh, stay with us here at Channel 2, the novel coronavirus. Keep it here. There's always more. Click to Houston.com. A breaking this morning, a man is dead in Rosenberg after he was trapped in concrete at a plant. Yeah, so by the time the first responders got there, it was just too late. Vincent Crivelli's covering the story live this morning. And uh, Vincent, the question we asked earlier was, was this for sure a plant worker? Owen, oh, good morning. Authorities told me exclusively that the victim works at the concrete plant behind me. Right now, investigators are paying close attention to some machinery in the plant. A horrific death. A man dies after getting stuck in concrete. Authorities say the victim works at this concrete plant and somehow became trapped in a concrete hopper, which is a piece of equipment used to distribute concrete. Workers quickly called 911 and said the man was unconscious. A medical helicopter was put on standby while Fort Bend County Sheriff's deputies rushed to the concrete plant. First responders had a difficult time getting to the man, but found him trapped in concrete and declared him deceased on scene. And the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office is spearheading this investigation. They have not released the victim's name as his family has not been notified. Reporting live in Rosenberg, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. New this morning, a neighbor quickly alerts one person living inside a vacant home after it caught fire last night in Sunnyside. Firefighters were initially told that people were trapped inside the home on Brinkley Street near Cullen, but when they did a search, they didn't find anyone. We're told a neighbor knew someone was staying there inside and alerted that person before firefighters arrived. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Child Protective Services is investigating a preschool in Northwest Harris County after a five-year-old girl died.
This all unfolded yesterday evening. Investigators say crews were called out to Kleinbrook Community Preschool when someone realized the girl was not breathing. The child was flown to Memorial Hermann where she died. According to the Harris County Sheriff's Office, the child showed no obvious signs of trauma, so no charges have been filed at this time. A scary moment captured on a ring doorbell camera. You can see right here a burglar trying to break into a home in northwest Harris County. This happened late last night on Lamborn Circle, just north of Spring Cypress Road near Champion Forest. The man realizes he's being recorded and tries to hide there from the camera's view. Deputies tell us there were two thieves who did eventually make it inside, but they ran off after they were confronted by the homeowners. They stole a purse and the homeowner's car. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Well, Super Tuesday is over, but one state is still busy counting the votes. Coming up, the state is still up in the air, and what's next for the Democratic candidates battling for the White House? Willie Nelson takes over Rodeo Houston. One of the classic hits he sang. And who's hitting the stage tonight? Britta, that's straight ahead. And we are waking up to cool and breezy weather. Here's a live look into Galveston. You can see those palm trees moving around. Our wind's coming in over 20 miles per hour at the coast with temperatures in the 50s, so grab a light sweater. But we're heading into the weekend. Beautiful weather to talk about. I have all your details on Saturday and Sunday coming up. And good morning. As you're hitting the roads, keep some stalls in mind, but nothing huge to tell you about. This is what most of your roads are looking like this morning. That's the good news. I'll have your update coming up in just a few minutes. Big night at the Houston Rodeo last night. And not just because I met so many great folks and had so much great wine in the wine garden, because that was a blast, but Willie Nelson took the stage and put on quite a show last night. Whiskey River, take my mind. My new friend Omar described him as a consummate professional. And there yes. you go, Willie Nelson on his 11th uh, time, 11th time on the rodeo wow. stage. Tonight, Becky G takes the stage, her first appearance. If uh, you want, you can still get tickets. Uh, show The rodeo starts at 645. Of course, the show's right after that. Hey, and another impressive show during last night's mutton busting competition. These kids weren't messing around. Some didn't make it too far. Others managed to go all the way. Whatever the case, we think they're all pretty impressive. Congrats, though, to little Dylan, who was last night's champion. We know he's got a bright future in mutton busting. I think we, did we, see, we saw Dylan right at the top. That was a great that run. Was, yeah, that was a great, great run. run. Might not be as good as Piper. She was never on the big rodeo. Just the, you know, where you go. But the, yeah, the, we may the try other. again this year. You should. Yeah, we'll see. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, coming up, it is almost time to bid farewell to this beloved royal couple. The event they're working today as things start to wind down. This morning, we are following the Democratic presidential race, tracking where things stand after Super Tuesday. As California continues counting votes, Joe Biden is building on his comeback as other candidates try to figure out where their campaigns go from here. Tracy Potts is live from Washington this morning. Good morning, Tracy. Hi, Amy. Good morning, everyone. They're calling it Joe Mentum. After Super Tuesday, Joe Biden says he has collected $7 million in donations. One person we know now backing him, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who dropped out of the race and is supporting endorsing Biden, but he can only give him $2,800. What he can do with those billions, set up a super PAC to support him. However, Biden is on top for now, but California is still outstanding with more than 400 delegates to be awarded. That is where Bernie Sanders is hoping to make up some ground. He says, personally, he thinks Biden is a great guy, but they've got very different ideas about a vision for the country, and he's hoping to have a chance to debate that in a substantive uh, race going forward. As for Elizabeth Warren, she placed third in her home state, and now her own people say she's reevaluating her campaign. Amy? All right, a lot of moving things parked out there. Thank you very much. And coming up today, an exclusive interview with Democratic frontrunner Joe Biden. His next steps following his big wins on Super Tuesday. The next hurdle is a place that I'm anxious to campaign in. We're going to go from the Dakotas all the way to, to, to Michigan, places where I think I can do well. 
And if I do that, it just piles up more support and more momentum. That's my hope. That's my expectation. But I'm not looking all the way down the road till the convention. Well, that exclusive interview with Savannah Guthrie is coming up just ahead on Today. Harry and Meghan are scheduled to appear at one of their last events as senior working royals. This evening, they'll appear at the annual Endeavor Fund Awards in London. The organization inspires injured and sick servicemen and women. There are reports Harry and Meghan's last official royal appearance is next Monday at a Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey with the Queen and other royal family members. That'd be like, yeah, a little family get-together to close things off. Wouldn't yeah, that be nice? Right. I'm sure it's super comfortable in that room. I know. <laughs> Don't forget, drop the print. It's just Harry. That's right. After next Monday. Himself. Yeah. Right? Or can yeah, we wait till next? You can wait till next Monday. All right, Prince. You got another week and a half, buddy. <laughs> there you go. Hey, it's 617. You can call me Princess anytime you want. <laughs> up the title whatever that's the best part right <laughs> well here's my little bit of advice get your oil checked you right service yeah. your car stalls, Good idea. stalls on the side of the road can really cause just as much much issues as crashes out there yeah. we've had several stars stalls this morning and traffic's picking up causing those backups because folks have to get around so Get your car checked. Good advice. Well, yeah. Yeah, very good advice. <laughs> Much on. appreciated. Uh, you know, weather is on our side this morning. Fog is not an issue. Our roads are dry. And guess what? We have sunshine on the way, so grab your sunglasses. I know there's somewhere out there. Uh, the good news is you are going to need them. So that is a look from our tower camera. We are waking up to cloudy skies, but I promise you we're going to push them on out of here, and we're looking at a beautiful day. We're in the 50s right now, so this is a cooler start, about 15 degrees cooler compared to yesterday. Sweaters are a great idea, especially if you're walking to work, waiting at the bus stop. 54 degrees in Conroe right now, 56 in Angleton. Temperatures right now at the coast in the upper 50s. Our winds are about 10 to 20 miles per hour. It's going to be breezy as we go into the afternoon, but it's all about the wind direction. Because our winds are coming in from the north, lower humidity, clear skies as we go into the afternoon, and really comfortable temperatures. We'll be in the 60s for lunchtime, topping off at 70 degrees. If you have plans after work and school, not looking bad. Still at 65 degrees at 7 p.m., but we will be cooling off tonight. So if you're going out to rodeo, calling it a later night, you want to keep a jacket with you. Unfortunately, tree pollen continues to be very high. With the wind being so strong this afternoon, it's going to pick up the pollen. So today is not a day that you want to take your allergies for granted. As we go into the afternoon, we are expecting those sunny skies. Radar and satellite looking great. The mess from yesterday is now pushing out to the east, and we have really nice, clear skies. We do have a little bit of a weak, cool front in the forecast. This is going to be for Friday night into Saturday. No rain, but it will bring in a little bit of a cool down for Saturday. 60s for your afternoon highs, but still a really pleasant weekend. As we go into Sunday, our winds come back from the south, so a little warm up back to the 70s, and next week is going to be warm and muggy. We have these weather systems to the north of us, and because they're not passing through, we'll continue to pull in that south wind. That means more cloud cover, more humidity, comfortable temperatures in the upper 70s, and maybe a slight shower chance, about 20 to 30 percent each and every day. Enjoy the sunshine today. It's going to be a chilly start tomorrow in the 40s 72 degrees Friday afternoon beautiful for Saturday and Sunday but do not forget to spring forward so as you go to bed Saturday night put those clocks one hour forward our sunset on Sunday Sophia will be at 7 35 over to you all right thanks so much Everybody's heading out the road this morning. We are seeing a couple slow slowdowns, and I want to show you some stalls, too, that we need to get to, some affecting others more than others. This stall, as you can see, is right here. This is the East Tex Freeway southbound before Will Clayton Parkway. Cars are having to kind of figure out a way around that vehicle. So, again, that's causing a little bit of an issue, not too much, but still it's there. Keep an eye out for it. Highway 288 at US 59. We did have reports of a truck stall here southbound. That has since cleared. Moving on, West Beltway 8. This is at West Road South. We do have a southbound stall here. So actually it was on right over here in this area it has since cleared that is what we like to see in the north beltway eight at north toll plaza this is westbound this is the right hand lane all right let me show you all the way down here see that 
That's where the stall is, and then it comes back. This is the backup. Again, this is westbound, so keep an eye out on that if you're heading westbound on the Beltway. All right, one last shot of your drive times. Hopefully everything's still in the clear, Kingwood. Pearland slowing down a bit. We'll keep you posted on any changes. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Sophia. The world's first cloned cat has died. Cece, short for copycat, was 18 years old. She was cloned by Texas A&M researchers and her owners, who were also part of the team who created her, said she was more than just a project. She was a beloved part of their family. Well, it is the most wonderful time of year for college basketball fans. Yeah, March Madness is almost here, and it could land you some new digs for the tournament. Maribel's here with that from New York. If you are a super fan, imagine this, getting to live inside a Buffalo Wild Wings for a night during the tournament. I'll tell you how it can happen. That's headline for the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. Well, first it was Snapchat, then Instagram and Facebook stories. Now Twitter is hopping on the disappearing content bandwagon. <laughs> the social network is now testing a new feature called Fleets which are posts that disappear after 24 hours. Unlike normal tweets, fleets do not receive retweets, likes, or public replies. Users can only react or respond to them with direct messages. The test is currently only available in Brazil and no word on when or if we'll ever get to use fleets here in the U.S. This morning, Buffalo Wild Wings is cooking up a crazy offer for March Madness. But first, a big day in New York. Stocks surge following Super Tuesday. Maribel's got the uh, outlook ahead for today and the Buffalo Wild Wings story. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Owen. It's been a roller coaster. Big rally on Wall Street yesterday, thanks in part to Joe Biden's Super Tuesday wins. His middle of the road views are seen as a more favorable by investors than those of Bernie Sanders. And word of increased spending out of Washington to combat the coronavirus added to the buying. The Dow soared 1,173, and uh, it's a 4.5% jump. NASDAQ was up 334 points. The SP 500 gained 126. As for today's trading, right now, looks like futures are pointing to a lower open. Dow futures are down more than 400 points, so we'll watch that closely. Buffalo Wild Wings is giving you the chance to live inside one of its restaurants during March Madness. The promotion gives four people an opportunity to spend one night inside a pop-up bed and breakfast at the chain's Chicago Lincoln Park location. Winners can take in all the college hoop games, either in the B&B or in the restaurant. You can enter the contest by posting a video to Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag B&D Dubs contest through next Thursday. You'll also get a bathrobe and full body towelettes, that's plural, <laughs> to keep you comfortable <laughs> oh. and clean during your overnight stay. <laughs> Owen and Amy, I mean, you got to be a big fan, but I need more than a salad. Right. Yeah. And you got to be a big fan of, the, of those wings, too, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, talk about brand loyalty, <laughs> sleeping in the place. All right, Maribel, appreciate it. <laughs> hey, the mission to the moon is happening, but what about Mars? Yeah, what about it? Coming up when we could learn new details today about that trip to Mars and how uh, getting to the moon would be the first step. All right, good morning, guys. Several stalls are what's causing problems here across town this morning. This is uh, okay. Cars are moving right along, but other ones causing some backups. We'll have the details coming up in a little bit. And we are waking up to cooler temperatures. We're in the 50s right now. The wind is picking up, and we are waking up to cloudy skies. Where's the sunshine? I'll let you know when it is going to return. Coming up next. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Developing this morning the first positive test for coronavirus in the Houston area. What we know about the patient and the next step to confirm the diagnosis. And we're following breaking news, a gruesome discovery this morning, a car up in flames, what firefighters found in the back seat of that car. That's a chilly start to this uh, Thursday morning, a cool start, if you will. Uh, get ready to hang up the jackets, though. we got some warm weather coming back. And there's nothing like a tall cup of coffee to jumpstart your morning, but before you head to Starbucks, you're going to want to leave something at home. Good morning, everybody. I'm Amy Davis, and for Tanaya. And I'm Owen Conflenti at 630. Sophia's on traffic. How's it going? Yeah, we've been doing good this morning. I am so surprised, and I just <laughs> want to thank everybody at home, you know, everybody in their cars. Um, we haven't had any issues. We just had a crash pop up just a few minutes ago, so good, 
morning. 6 30 and first crash. First crash. Yeah. Wow. Can't I'm say really that many times. I just yeah. Say. Good. Proud of you guys. Way to go. Uh, weather feels good this morning. It's cooler, so it's a refreshing start. We do have cloudy skies this morning, but sunshine is on the way. It's taking over for Thursday afternoon. You're going to love it. Let's right. take you outside and show you those cloudy skies. Over downtown, we are in the 50s. It is a cooler start, so grab a light sweater. You're going to feel a difference compared to yesterday. 56 degrees currently at Bush Airport. We're at 54 in Conroe. Temperatures right now at the coast in the upper 50s. Out to the west in Katy, 54 degrees. In Sugarland, you're at 56 degrees. This afternoon, we're going to warm up nicely with that beautiful sunshine. At lunchtime, we're in the 60s, topping off at 70 degrees. If you have plans after work, after school, not bad. We'll keep it in the 60s as late as about 8 p.m., but then it's going to be chilly tonight. So if you're a late night rodeo person, make sure you keep your jacket with you. All of us in this room, we go to bed at you know, 7 o'clock at night, so we're not with you on that one. Winds right now, 10 to 15 miles per hour. At the coast, we're at 22. It is going to be breezy this afternoon, and we are still tracking very high levels of tree pollen. So if you are an allergy sufferer, this is going to be a day that you want to be on top of your symptoms because it is going to be very brisk out there. We'll take a look at what we're expecting for your weekend forecast coming up. Sophia, over to you. All right, good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. Yeah, building and building traffic is definitely building and backing up this morning. Everyone's good. Don't worry about that. All right, North Freeway at the Hardy Toll Road. Yeah, this is our first crash of the morning that has popped up. It's a two-vehicle crash. Uh, we're going to try and get some more information on this, but if you can avoid this section, this area, you'll probably be in much better shape just knowing that this is going to probably be there for a while. This is the Katy Freeway at West Loop. This is westbound. Check out this backup. We are told there is a truck stall causing that backup there. One more shot to show you. This is a south loop at Brazewood northbound. There's one stall there just on the right. It's coming around that bend, so just be careful when you're coming around that side and, and make sure you don't hit that car. All right, looking green. Just one slow down there, 21 minutes in from Pearland. Looking good so far, guys. Back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Sophia. 632 now, developing this morning. The Centers for Disease Control could confirm today whether a Fort Bend County man is the first novel coronavirus patient in our area. Yeah, Fort Bend County health officials believe this man has the virus. A test done locally was positive. Channel 2's Brittany Jeffers is in Rosenberg this morning. Brittany, what do we know about this man? Hey, good morning, guys. As far as this particular patient is concerned, we're told that he's a man in his 70s. He'd recently traveled abroad, but yesterday health officials uh, cited HIPAA laws, and they were pretty tight-lipped as far as which country this man had traveled to and which airport he returned to. We know this news is concerning. It is not unexpected. The first presumptive positive case of COVID-19 in Fort Bend County. Although they will undergo more testing, local health officials believe this is the real deal. We believe that the result is, in fact, an actual, uh, con uh, an actual positive. It will undergo a confirmation process at the CDC. But at this point, we have no reason to believe that there's anything other than accurate. Health officials say the patient is a man in his 70s. They say he tested positive after he traveled abroad and became ill upon returning to the U.S. His symptoms were discovered by his personal physician, and he had no pre-existing conditions. Right now, that patient is hospitalized and listed in stable condition. At this point, health officials believe the situation appears to be isolated, but say there are preventative measures that you can take. This is a rapidly evolving situation, and we know it's unsettling for our residents. We want you to remember that there are things that you can do to protect yourselves and your families. Remaining calm is of utmost importance. Officials urge you to avoid the ER unless it is critical. If you have symptoms like cough, fever, or respiratory problems, contact your doctor. And practice good hygiene habits like washing your hands often with soap after eating, using the restroom, or coughing and sneezing. So again, just to reiterate, in this case, we are still awaiting test results from the CDC, which we are told it should arrive within the next day or two. In the meantime, here in the county, emergency operations have been activated now to level three. Reporting live here in Fort Bend County this morning, I'm Brittany Jeffers, KPRC Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Brittany. Fort Bend ISD is taking no chances this morning. Between this possible case in the county and spring break travel coming soon, they want to assure parents that they are thinking about student safety. Channel 2 health reporter Haley Hernandez is live in Sugarland this morning. So, Haley, what do parents there need to know? 
Yeah, guys, so this is a huge school district, and obviously parents are concerned about the spread of the virus, but there is no reason to indicate that it's here right now. But with spring break next week and with a possible case in the county, the superintendent sent out a very important message last night saying the district of 76,000 students, 11,000 employees, and 80 campuses are canceling school-sponsored trips abroad and will not punish families for a self-quarantine after traveling for personal vacations. We are encouraging our families to follow the federal government's travel advisories. With that said, unlike other districts in our state, Fort Bend has many more families that travel internationally during spring break for vacation and to visit extended family in areas not currently affected by travel advisories. Therefore, he says, if you choose to travel and then stay home and self-quarantine after spring break, your absences will not be counted against you. He is encouraging families to do what you feel is safe for your family's health. Reporting live at Fort Bend ISD, I'm Haley Hernandez, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you, Haley. 636 uh, right now. We're also still waiting for results on a possible novel coronavirus case at Rice University. Uh, the test results were sent to the CDC earlier in the week for a researcher who'd been overseas. The results are expected today or tomorrow. That researcher had come in contact with 17 others at Rice. Uh, all of those folks are being urged to self-quarantine for now. Well, airlines are taking a big hit as countries race to contain the novel coronavirus. Several CEOs met with President Trump yesterday saying they'll have to make big changes that will hurt the bottom line. Two airlines taking action already, United and JetBlue. United Airlines is cutting its number of flights in the U.S. and Canada by 10% next month. They'll cut overseas flights by 20%. JetBlue says it's reducing its number of passengers by 5%, and the airline also plans to hire fewer people for several positions. Amazon is taking swift action after it's an employee in its downtown Seattle office contracted the coronavirus. They're asking all of their employees in downtown Seattle and Bellevue to work from home until the end of March. It's not clear how many employees the order extends to. The employee with the virus has not been back to work since getting sick last month. And overseas, the novel coronavirus shows no signs of slowing down. Iran has been hit hard. Their death toll has jumped to 107, with more than 3,500 confirmed cases. Globally, more than 95,000 people are infected. For more on the novel coronavirus outbreak and to follow the possible cases in our area, stay with us on air and online at click2houston.com. 6.38 right now, still tracking breaking news from North Houston. A man's body was discovered in the back seat of a burning car. Investigators suspect foul play. The car was in the parking lot of an apartment complex on Werner Street at Walt Hall. Uh, witnesses reported hearing a loud explosion before the fire. According to investigators, the man's body was so badly burned he's unrecognizable. They'll do an autopsy on him to identify him this morning. Well, new this morning, a man was found shot to death in the doorway of an apartment in northwest Houston. The call came in just before 1230 at the Meadows on the Muse Apartments off Ashford Meadow. We're told emergency crews tried to save the man, but he died at the scene. He was shot multiple times. Right now, police do not have a motive. Investigators plan to review the complex's security cameras. And developing this morning, we're learning more about the victims of the deadly tornadoes that touched down in Tennessee earlier this week. Yeah, we're seeing some of the, uh, the video here from uh, just the damage and destruction. 24 people were killed. At least four of them were under the age of 10, including a two-year-old, Sawyer, who was with her parents, Josh and Erlen Kimberlin, who died, uh, Aaron Kimberlin, that is, who also died. Carl Frazee was killed in his home. His daughter says he died saving his girlfriend. Michael Dolfini and Albert Sexton were heading home after a night out when they were killed. As the community continues to grieve their deaths, the search continues for three people missing in Putnam County. Survivors are thankful, of course, to be alive, but they're also wondering what's next. My whole life is right, well, I'd say right here, it's scattered everywhere. All of our property back there, everything, it's just, it's gone. 
National Weather Service says this was the deadliest tornado in seven years, the worst since a monstrous EF5 killed 24 people in Oklahoma. It's 6.40 now to the future of space. New details are expected today in NASA's new Moon to Mars plan. The NASA head, uh, Jim Bridenstine, will lay it all out in Washington uh, at a hearing today. The plan involves landing humans on the moon again by the year 2024. The path to Mars, well, that's a bit of a mystery still. Yeah, well, NASA is also expected to announce the name of its new Mars rover today. Only known as Mars 2020 for now, we'll find out the name at 1230 today. NASA got help from students across the country to name this rover. The rover itself is expected to take off for Mars this summer from Florida. Good news this week from Jeopardy host Alex Trebek. He posted a video on social media yesterday talking about his prognosis one year after being diagnosed with pan pancreatic cancer. Hi everyone. If you've got a minute, I'd like to bring you up to date on my health situation. The one year survival rate for stage four pancreatic cancer patients is 18%. I'm very happy to report I have just reached that marker. One year, beating unbelievable odds to do it. Trebek says he plans to take things one day at a time to reach year two. He's 79 years old. He's hosted Jeopardy since 1984. He says he'll keep doing it until he can't. Yeah, that's some great news this morning. All right, the time now is 6.41. We want to check in with Britta for our weather news today. Yeah, now. not bad. Let me take you down to the island. This is a live look at Moody Gardens. Notice that our palm trees, they are moving and grooving in the wind. So it is going to be a breezy day. We have mostly cloudy skies, but sunshine eventually is going to be taking over today. Great to see. We're at 57 degrees currently here in Houston, upper 50s at the coast and 56 degrees in Sugarland. Right now our winds uh, 15 to 20 miles per hour. It's going to be breezy even through the afternoon. So the only issue, of course, is that our tree pollen is really high. Weather, you can't complain about it, though. Sunshine is expected this afternoon. Mid-60s for your lunchtime temperatures, and we'll top off at 72 degrees. It's time to go out to rodeo tonight. I do recommend a light sweater. Becky G is our headliner. We'll be cooling down to the upper 50s as you head home from your big night. Uh, we'll talk about your weekend forecast coming up. Over to you. All right, thank you. It's also a big day for Astros fans because individual game tickets go on sale this morning. Yeah, what time you'll be able to snag the first tickets to the Astros home opener against the Angels. Also next, it's a special day at Rodeo Houston. Uh, more on the first ever sensory friendly day and why that's so important. 643 right now. Only on today. In your consumer headlines, Kroger is limiting some products to curb coronavirus hoarding. Kroger is limiting the number of sanitizing products and cold and flu medicines that you can buy. In a statement, Kroger said it will limit the number to five per order. It's unclear whether the restrictions apply to all of the stores Kroger operates or only to online orders. The coronavirus will also impact your next trip to Starbucks. The company says it is temporarily suspending the use of personal cups at its stores. On the bright side, it will still honor its 10 cent discount for any customer who does bring in their own cup or tumbler. Maybe not fill them though. It's unclear how long the suspension will last. Starbucks also says it is increasing the number of cleanings at all of its locations. IKEA is recalling more than 800,000 dressers that could tip over and seriously injure or even kill small children. Owners are being asked to immediately stop using the Cullen three drawer chest if it's not properly anchored to the wall. You can return it to IKEA or arrange for a free pickup or a full refund. You can also order a free wall anchor kit to secure it properly. Yeah, you gotta anchor all those down. Uh, and another fun day at the rodeo ahead today. Uh, if you're heading out this morning, it's the first ever sensory friendly carnival day. That goes from 10 this morning until 1 this afternoon. They're gonna tone it down a little bit. There'll be minimal lights and sounds permitted in certain areas of the junction and the main carnival area to provide a positive experience for families with sensory sensitivities or challenges. I think that makes a big difference. It's not just about the lights and the sounds. It's about knowing that everyone here is here for the same reason. We've got 40 rides open. Some of our games will be open. Food options will be open as well. 
You can imagine how overwhelming the experience can be generally for yeah. some children, which is why they came up with this idea. Among the 40 rides in the experience, the Goliath slide, the mini bumper cars, the wacky worm. You'll find the whole list at click2houston.com. Rodeo volunteers, by the way, from the Special Children's Committee will also be there to help the guests get around and, and really, again, enjoy this full experience uh, specially made for uh, for this, uh, this group of children. Yeah, it's awesome. a great idea. Hopefully it's the first of many and this is just a tradition that they do every single year. So hats off to you guys. It's super important. And hopefully everybody can go out and support it. Weather's going to be perfect for it. Right. Uh, we're expecting sunshine today. It's a little bit cool this morning, so grab a light sweater. Uh, this is a look outside. A little cloudy. Don't worry about that. The clouds are going to be gone over the next few hours, and then the rest of our Thursday looks stellar. Uh, we're at 56 degrees currently here in Houston. Upper 50s at the coast. 54 degrees in Conroe. Tomball, you're in the mid-50s. We're also waking up to the mid-50s in Fort County. It is going to be a really nice lunch hour. We'll warm things up to the 60s with our winds coming in from the north northwest. We're going to pull in nice dry air. So humidity is going to be low. The only issue with our winds coming in 15 to 20 miles per hour will be the pollen count. We'll get to that in a moment. But first focus on that afternoon 72 degrees. It's going to be great out there. If you have plans for tonight heading out to rodeo being with your family or loved ones just make sure you have a light sweater because it's going to get chilly after sunset. Here's a look at that pollen count very high for tree pollen. That's what we expect this time of year, but with winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour, that pollen's going to blow everywhere. So if you do have allergy issues, today's a day to be on top of it. The mess from yesterday is moving out to the east. You can tell all the way up towards Colorado. Satellite and radar looks completely clear, so we're in for sunshine. It's going to be beautiful. As we head into the weekend, we have a weak cool front Friday night into Saturday morning. No rain, but we will expect temperatures to be slightly cooler on Saturday in the 60s. They warm back up to the 70s on Sunday with our winds moving back on shore from the south. Now, as we look towards next week, a little bit of a change. We have these weather systems passing to the north of us, and because they're staying to our north, we're kind of stuck in this warm and muggy weather pattern. We're going to be in the upper 70s, more humidity, and a touch of an afternoon shower. We just can't rule it out, so that's why you're going to see a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain each and every day of next week. Enjoy this weekend. It's going to be great, but do not forget it is time to spring forward. So that happens Saturday night before you go to bed. Flip those clocks forward one hour. So Sophia, over to you. Oh, I always forget. Thanks for the reminder, Britta. All right, more and more cars on the road, more and more red on the map. Let's take a look. This is the North Freeway at the Hardy Toll Road. Two car crash, firefighters there working to clear that scene. Three frontage lanes are affected. So I want to show you the North Freeway at the Hardy Toll Road. The highway is free and clear, so that is the good news. Let's take a look at your drive times now. Inbound, we've got some green, some yellow, some slow, and slows in several spots. So we're going to keep an eye on this for you and have one more uh, time saver traffic wheel coming up in a few minutes, guys. Okay, Sophia, thanks. At 10 minutes to 7, Astros opening day is almost here. Single game tickets go on sale today, 9 o'clock this morning. You can get them online or over the phone. Opening day is Thursday, the 26th, against the Angels. That game historically sells out quickly, as you know. So if you want tickets, you got to try early. An Islanders hockey player is recovering after a horrific injury this week. Johnny Boychuk was cut in the face with a skate. Ow. Right next to his eye. Uh. He skated off the ice while holding his face. They rushed him to the hospital for <gasps> surgery. Oh. Plastic surgeon put his face back together with 90 stitches. 90. Yesterday, he uh, talked about it on Twitter. Thanks for the support. He even joked. Sorry for the late response. <sighs> Facial recognition wasn't working. Oh. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, kudos to him for having yeah, a good attitude right. about it. Thank you again, my friends. Coming up, more traffic and weather here on Channel 2. And don't forget to follow us online with our new What's Driving Houston traffic page with everything you need to know to get where you're going on time. It's all at click2houston.com for the best selection. A man is dead in Rosenberg after he was trapped in concrete at a plant. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli has details on the man's tragic death. Yeah, good morning. Authorities told me exclusively that the man who died here works at the concrete plant behind me. Right now, investigators are focusing their attention on a concrete hopper where the man was found. Overnight, someone found the man stuck in concrete in the hopper and called 911. With a medical helicopter on standby, first responders rushed to the concrete plant and discovered the man trapped in concrete and declared him deceased. And the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office is spearheading this investigation. They have not released the man's name as his family has 
not been notified. Reporting in Rosenberg, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Well, Fort Bend County says it is dealing with its first presumptive positive case involving a 70-year-old man. This would be the first coronavirus case in the Houston area. Brittany Jeffers live this morning with what the county is saying about the patient. Brittany? Yeah, we've learned from county officials that this particular patient is a man in his 70s. They say that he recently traveled abroad, and it was yesterday that Fort Bend officials uh, told us that that man tested positive after he traveled abroad. He then became ill upon returning home to the U.S. They say that his symptoms were discovered by his personal physician and that he had no pre-existing conditions. They say right now that patient is hospitalized and listed in stable condition. However, citing HIPAA laws, health officials were pretty tight lipped about what country the man had traveled to and what airport he returned to. So again, right now, there's still uh, more test results as we are waiting to hear back about, uh, particularly the CDC. Health officials say that those results should be released within the next day or two. Live here this morning in Fort Bend County, I'm Brittany Jeffers, KPRC Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Brittany. And now, Fort Bend County school officials are alerting parents about that possible case. Channel 2's Haley Hernandez, live from district headquarters with what school officials are saying about spring break travel. Haley? Yeah, good morning, guys. So spring break is next week. So the superintendent sent out a very important message last night saying that the district of 76,000 students, 11,000 employees are canceling school sponsored trips abroad and will not punish families for a self quarantine after traveling for personal vacations. Therefore, he says if you do choose to travel and then return from spring break and decide to self quarantine your family, absences will not be counted against you. Reporting live from Fort Bend ISD. I'm Haley Hernandez, KPRC Channel 2 News. All right, it's now 656. Here's a look at your top stories this morning. We're going to hear from Judge Lena Hidalgo and public health officials after that county coronavirus preparedness workshop. They're going to speak at the Harris County Office of Homeland Security. This event is happening at 930 this morning and we will be there to cover it. Becky G takes the rodeo stage tonight, her first appearance. She says it's her biggest show in America so far. You can still get tickets if you'd like to go. The show starts around 8.45 tonight. Here's Sophia. All right, good morning, guys. More cars out on the road means more green on the map. North Freeway at Hardy Toll Road, they just zoomed out, but there on your left-hand screen was that crash. It was a two-car crash, three frontage lanes affected. Not much trouble other than that. One more camera shot. This is the area, the highway. See what I mean? It's all clear for you guys, so don't even worry about that because it's on the frontage roads. All right, here are your drive times. 34 minutes in from the Woodlands, 25 minutes in from Pearland. Looking good so far, Britta. Not bad, and we're in for sunshine. We do have cloudy skies right now, but sun returns today and takes over, and it's going to be a beautiful day. It's a little cool right now in the 50s, so grab a light jacket. You also notice that it's breezy, and with tree pollen being really high, keep that in mind. A 20 mile per hour wind can make you feel a little uncomfortable with that high of tree pollen. 72 degrees this afternoon. It's going to be glorious. Get out there, enjoy it. We have beautiful weather all the way through the weekend, and do not forget that this weekend is time to spring forward. Whew. Thanks for that reminder. Yes. I'm just just saying because I need to remember. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> always. Pack your jackets and your Claritin. We got yes. cheese doodle day. Cheese doodle. I love yeah? cheese doodle. It's a good snack, right? The best. Cheetos count? Yeah. So. Okay, I'm sold. We'll make them. For the